here we go. So this is a very quick video to show you how I render my uh, FPV flights uh, when I use multiple tracks and I synchronize them by audio. Uh, first of all, the editing software I use is PowerDirector. Uh, my onboard camera for this specific flight is a GoPro Session 5. My on the ground camera is a GoPro Session or a GoPro Hero 5 black um, at 120 frames a second. And the audio track is bang a gong. So I drag my tracks into PowerDirector. You'll see this green icon in the bottom corner of the video tracks. That would generally be yellow um, when you first drag them in and then PowerDirector re-renders them at a lower resolution to play with them in the timeline. I've already done that step ahead of time so that you don't have to sit here waiting for it. This track, I can tell just by, by the video that this is the one from the onboard for the quad. I'm going to put that on top, then my camera that sits on the ground, and then my audio track. So I put all three of these in the timeline. Let me just shorten that up for a second. So you can see that they're different lengths. Um, now I'm going to synchronize them by audio. I do that by highlighting all three at the same time using the control and the left mouse button, and then sync by audio. PowerDirector does its magic, goes and analyzes the audio on the three tracks, and synchronizes them. So to allow for that synchronization to take place properly, usually I start up the camera, these two video cameras, this track and this track, a little bit ahead of, of starting the song and I'll say something like synchronizing audio, one, two, three, go, so that these two have a good frame of reference. And then I also start the audio track before my flight so that all three cameras are seeing the same audio. That generally works pretty well for me. So I'll just play this right from the start at first here. Synchronizing cameras. Three, two, one, go. So you can see a little bit of my OCD moving the cameras around. Now I'm going around the other side of the car and I'm going to grab, start the audio track and... Synchronizing cameras. Three, two, one, go. And we'll press play. Now just to show you that it, I'm going to disable this audio from the actual track, I, audio track I imported, just so you can hear it from the cameras. You see how the audio goes away. Now I used to I used to play around with the levels there to make it clear that when I pulled the the quad out of the car, the audio was going quieter, but I don't do that anymore. It's just a, a little bit of a waste of time. So I'm going to re-enable this audio track. I'm going to actually mute this entire clip because I don't want any of the sound from on the quad. And I'm going to go back to where I pressed the, the play on the phone and start my video from there. So I'm going to split these clips, highlight both of these, Hit my delete button and remove fill gap and move all clips. It's going to move everything to the left. So that's going to end up being the start of my video. So I let this play through. Actually, so now I take the quad out, put the two cameras down. You can see the video you're seeing right now is actually from this clip right here. Um, I'm going to wait until the quad starts spinning. Okay, so you see the rocks being thrown at the quad here? I want to back up a little bit because I want to catch that in slow motion eventually. So I'm going to back up until I don't see any rocks spinning anymore. I'm going to lock my audio track because I don't want to split that. And split those two. I'm going to go a little further and I'm going to find my split for the slow-mo. So I'm just going to do about that much in slow-mo. And split the tracks there. I'll do the actual slow-mo for it later. So I'm going to fast forward, because I've done this a few times, um, I'm used to it. I'm going to fast forward and find the spot where I land. Okay, so you see how I'm kind of coming in on an angle there? I want to catch a little bit of that rotation. So I'm going to back up to about maybe there. 
And again, I'm going to split both of those tracks and let it play. There, and stop it. I'm going to go a couple frames forward and split it. Okay, so now I'm going to get rid of, I don't need the video from the onboard camera for that end part. And I don't need this stuff after my slow-mo. And now I can do the actual slow-mo on this last little clip. So I'll go up to tools, power tools, video speed, speed adjustment, nothing like so many clicks, but, uh, and then the camera I have on the ground is at, uh, oh, what is it? How many frames a second? 120 frames a second. So I can slow it to a quarter of that speed and still have smooth video. So here we go, I'll back up a little bit and you can see what that's gonna look like. Now, what you'll be seeing before the point of the slow motion when I'm finally done is, is actually the onboard. But I, as of right now, we're just gonna see the slow-mo here all from the, on the ground camera. Looks good. Now I'm gonna remove all this stuff in between for the on-ground camera. I'm gonna unlink the audio and video and remove the video portion. Remove and leave gap. And now you can see what it's, that end part is going to look like in the actual video. There we go. Good. I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do slow-mo for the takeoff. Now slow-mo for the takeoff is a bit of a different deal because we still have the audio track mixed in. So I'm going to actually copy this clip, paste it into a new track in the timeline. So you see it down here. And I'm going to lock up the rest of the timeline because when I do slow motion on this, I don't want anything else to shift over. I want the flight to actually be in sync with what the audio was from the song while I was flying. So here I go tools, power tools, video speed, speed adjustment. And again, because this is the camera on the ground, I can slow it down to a quarter of the speed. So now when we listen to this, you're gonna hear both the slow motion audio and the audio of what's really going on in the flight. Um, through this little period of the of the timeline and, and it's gonna sound kind of weird. So you probably heard that. So that was me doing my first flip or first power loop or something. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first I have to unlock these I'm going to manipulate the audio a little bit for the beginning of this this track. And how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to kind of fade myself into it. And for this one as well, I'm going to expand that. For this one as well, I'm going to pull this down to almost zero. So let's see how that sounds. Ah, I still hear it. So I'm going to pull this down further and maybe uh, see how that looks. There, I can't hear it anymore. So there we go. I've got my slow motion at the beginning, I've got my slow motion at the end. Now I'm going to delete this first portion of the onboard video because what's going to happen if I don't delete that I'm going to, I'll show you I'll, I'll add a fade in for the beginning you see how it kind of mixes the two together and it looks to me it looks a little weird so I'm going to just delete this portion right there because we're not using it anyway and now my fades nice and smooth 
Now, similarly, I'm going to do a fade at the end. And when I do my fade at the end, because the fade's on the second track and it's a fade out, for some reason, PowerDirector decides to fade with the black. And you'll see what kind of weirdness that causes. It causes this kind of double effect. Fades out. Oh, okay, you didn't see it there. Don't make me redo this video. Okay, I take it all back. Maybe it might be because the uh, when I've done this previously, I've still had this portion of the track above in place, and maybe it faded the two tracks. And then when I delete the, that portion of that track, it does this double fade with with the black, and it and it looks kind of weird. So okay, so I got my fade in, got my fade out, I've got my audio track. I think I'm ready. just quickly go over just a little bit of it just to just to verify that everything is looking good hear what it sounds like without this track in there at all. It's definitely cleaner. So the question is, is the sound from the quad when I do the power loops and things worth having the audio a little dirtier sounding because this is picking up audio from from through the car window? And the answer to that for me, it is worth having it. So I'm going to keep it in there. All right, so that's it. That concludes my how to edit this video. Um, a couple things about the flight. This is my first flight using MU Flight on the Floss style. Um, I can't say that it was a huge improvement. It's maybe a little smoother in sections. Uh, it's definitely got a little bit more prop wash. So maybe uh, once I uh, adjust my my PIDs just a little bit to try and get rid of some of that prop wash, I can make a better judgment as to whether EMU Flight is any better than Beta Flight for this specific quad. Uh, that's about it. Uh, well, as, uh, yeah, as far as my, my flight performance itself, I missed a bunch of my power loops. I'm not happy about that, but that's what happens when you switch back and forth from one quad to the other, or you're, you completely change your rates or your tuning, or it's different things. Specifically for me, the, the camera angle, the changing camera angle, uh, gets me and usually it takes a couple power loops for me to to get used to the the specific quad and with its specific camera angle that I'm flying. I'm sure that's the same for almost everybody. Um, okay, so that's it. Everybody have a good day. Uh, thanks for watching and stay safe. Okay, here's a little afterthought. Um, I went to render the video and I thought, you know what, I'll just show that process just so I can show you one of the neat things with PowerDirector. I'm sure other ed editors have it as well but I use it for my uh, FPV videos. So when I go to the Produce tab in PowerDirector, I can do this Intelligent SVRT, and it will attempt to match up uh, the exact video from w one of your cameras to what we're gonna put out in the final video. So I click on that and you see, I already have a profile set up called GoPro 2K, and it matches exactly what was coming out of the GoPro, and it tells me that 85% of my video is in that format. You can see this second one down here, that's the, the on-ground camera at 120 frames a second. So I'm gonna select that GoPro 2K. And when I do my rendering, let me just give it a title. Uh, how to make an FPV video. I will change that title later. And watch how quickly this renders because it really doesn't have anything to do in this entire video. It has to re-render the, the two slow motion portions and the two fade portions. The rest of it is just substituting or adding audio track and mixing audio tracks, which is quick. So watch how quickly this renders. Click on start. It'll go a little bit slow at first because it's doing the 
120 frames a second video and the fade in. But once it hits the portion in the video where I'm no longer doing the slow motion, watch how quickly the producing line goes. And it'll do that right up till the end of the video. So our 5%, I would say it's probably roughly 10% into the video or so. It should start speeding up. Wow, this is taking longer than I thought. There we go. And that's all of the session five video as it goes through like that. So what you're getting in the final thing that I put up on YouTube is exactly what came out of the GoPro as far as video quality goes. There's audio overlaid with it, but but so that's really nice. It's a nice feature of PowerDirector in there. My render is complete. And now I can go over to my videos folder pull this over and see the final product. And I'll usually spot check it at least before I throw it up on YouTube, make sure everything looks good. There we go. All done. So once again, stay safe and have a good day.